All the agreement did was to find a diplomatic solution to a very significant and difficult problem for Gibraltar indeed. That the GSD could have amended the Nature Protection Act, Mr. Speaker, in order to allow for regulated fishing with nets. Yes, it could have. That that may be susceptible to criticisms. Perhaps it might be susceptible to criticism. It is the sudden confining of the 1999 agreement to the dustbin of history without carefully thinking about the consequences in not having anything to take its place that has been the main thrust of our criticism. It was described, Mr. Speaker, by the Chamber of Commerce as a rookie error from genuflection of our sovereignty, jurisdiction, and control, it ten turned into an outright challenge of our sovereignty, jurisdiction, and control. And the government must accept responsibility for its part in that. The principal job and the principal concern of any chief minister of Gibraltar is to keep the people of Gibraltar safe and secure, and to avoid anything that creates instability and insecurity within this jurisdiction that we're all here, and this community that we're all here uh, to serve and that we all love so much. I have asked him for uh, questions about what the government intends to do about regulation in British Gibraltar territorial waters on four or five occasions in this House, Mr. Speaker. And he has refused to answer those questions on every single occasion. The government is answerable in this House for the things that it does. But we are not answerable for our thoughts. We are not answerable for simply wanting to consider things and develop them. The Honourable Gentleman is not entitled to come into our heads and see what we're thinking about. In the context of asking questions in this House and in the context of this motion, honorable members opposite seem to think that they are entitled not just to reports, but to work done in the context of preparing reports. Not just final reports, but draft reports. Not just what is your policy, also what do you think might be your policy. Well, Mr. Speaker, it is not possible to conduct a government on the basis of simply telling the Honourable Gentleman everything we are thinking. Now, you would have thought if they had conducted themselves in government from a position of giving us all their preparatory work, all their reports, and defending that level of transparency, it would be right for them to demand the same now. But they didn't even give us the final fruit of work. Yesterday we looked at what reports they didn't give us. They didn't give us the report into GBC. They didn't give us the report into customs. Any report which they had prepared they said was internal and for the government. And we went to the election saying we would be more transparent. We would publish those reports and we would publish any reports we obtained. And we will. And my, 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 Mr. Speaker. I was accused earlier on of singing my praises when it's, I was speaking about the Alameda Gardens, and now we have heard the Leader of the Opposition singing his praises about his work as a minister in 15 years. The difference, Mr. Speaker, is that he was for 15 years in politics, I was for 20 years El Jardinero. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, um, as a rookie, uh, indeed, um, I must also uh, point out that I already have more parliamentary experience than any two-term GSD minister. What we didn't do in opposition was to say to Mr. Caruana, you have created the problem with Spain by having the ship arrested. You are responsible for the blockade in the frontier by having done this because unlike the measure well thought out, supposed GSD way we haven't described now, that is not what happened then. They didn't do a measure well thought out process where they knew what was going to happen. They arrested a ship, which they were perfectly entitled to do, which we fully supported, and then 
the Spanish fishermen blockaded our frontier illegally and we did not blame the government of Gibraltar for the blockade by the Spanish fishermen because that was not the GSLP way. The GSLP way was to say we don't agree with Mr. Caruana and we don't agree with the GSD, but if the Spaniards attack the chief minister of Gibraltar, we defend him. The GSLP way of doing things is the way of doing things that people have selected in this community to govern. Therefore, condemning the fishing agreement with the GSD did is absolutely right. Believing that the agreement was wrong is absolutely right. Taking note of the expert report is what we must do. Considering the regulation of fishing in BGTW a matter for this parliament is what we must do. Welcoming the way this government is trying to ensure that that is done in consultation with stakeholders is what we must do. And reaffirming the unquestionable sovereignty of, of this parliament over the land and sea of Gibraltar is exactly the right way of doing things. And let me say, Mr. Speaker, now coming back to the Chief Minister, that I had an ally, I had an ally in the Honourable the Chief Minister in relation to this, because he was the one that persuaded me, Mr. Speaker, that the leadership of the Father of the House could not be trusted. Those were the words that the Honourable the Chief Minister used in my house in Soto Grande. I suppose that the Honourable Gentleman, the Father of the House, was always right, was always right, when he used to say to me, the best plots are always hatched in Soto Grande. Well, Mr. Speaker, that is the reality. That is the reality. And, Mr. Speaker, there was a moment of admission, a moment of admission by the Honorable, the Chief Minister, uh, yesterday during questions, when he said, well, those were just simply the indiscretions of youth. Well, if it was indiscretions of youth, Mr. Speaker, to say that the leadership of the Honourable, the leader of the House, Mr. Vosano, was not to be trusted. Well, I suppose I could be forgiven for having some indiscretions myself in terms of my political past.